Okay, let's talk about the New York State Teacher Certification Exam. And the one we're going to be talking about in this particular video is the Birth uh, Through Grade 2 exam. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the math uh, portion of this uh, particular exam. So what we're going to do is take a look at an example problem that you should be able to handle to do uh, well on this particular uh, certification exam. So welcome. I assume that if you're watching this video that you are needing to take this exam, you're studying for it, so that's fantastic. Uh, before we get going, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I am a middle and high school math teacher, so I definitely um, relate to taking a uh, professional teacher exam. So I had to go through that on top of having a degree in math, a master's degree, and what it takes to be a teacher, right? You see, you got to get your degrees and then you go to you have to take certification exams and then you have to continue on with professional uh, development. So if you're new to teaching, you have all that wonderful education <laughs> to look forward to. But uh, if you're an experienced teacher already and maybe you're looking to teach uh, earlier elementary grades, then you already kind of know um, you know what's expected of you but with any respect um, this particular exam although it's birth the grade two there's um, you know could certainly be kind of a misperception that the math portion of this exam is like really easy basic you know primary grade type stuff on although there are um, some topics of that nature on the exam you're still going to have to know a decent amount of algebra and geometry etc uh, for this particular exam so anyways if you're interested in my uh, teaching and what i do with tablet class math i actually offer a specific uh, a new york state teacher certification birth of grade two prep course math prep course i'll leave the link to that course in the description of this video if that's something you want to check out but let's go ahead and take a look at this problem Okay, let's see. Let me first of all describe it to you. You can kind of see it right here. And then I'm going to give you a chance to um, solve it. And then we'll talk about it, of course, together. So here we have 1 over x plus 2 over y. So what I'd like you to do is to add these two fractions. Okay, so really we call these rational expressions in mathematics, but you don't need to know that. But how can you simplify this? How can you write this here? differently okay how can we combine those two so if you're like already kind of like totally lost and then you know continue to watch the video because I'm, I'm uh, going to explain how we would uh, approach this but if you think you can do it go ahead and you know play around with it here for a second all right so before I give you the full solution I want you to kind of think of um, what you would do uh, if you're adding regular fractions, right? So you have 1 over x plus 2 over y. So let's ask ourselves here. We have x as one denominator and we have y as a different denominator. So let's make an example problem up. Let's, uh, let's say 1 third plus 1 fifth, something like this, okay? So here we have, um, well, let's do it this way, 2 fifths so we can kind of match the numerator as well. So think about what you would do here, because this pretty much models this problem, but we're not using x and y as the denominators, we have actual numbers. So how would you do this problem, okay? And then kind of think about that as a mm, kind of a clue to maybe to um, uh, simplify this particular expression. Okay, so what I am going to show you is going to be really, really worth your time. Okay, so you're like, well, I hope so, because you know, you don't want to waste your time. Your time is precious. So I'm going to show you a great little trick with fractions. Okay, so what I'm going to show you, first of all, let's just talk about fractions real quick. If you know how to multiply fractions, then you can divide fractions. It's basically the same thing. What we do with fractions is we take division fraction problems and turn them into multiplication problems. Okay, so if you know how to multiply fractions, then division problems involving fractions essentially are going to turn into multiplication problems. So this is easy stuff. I'm not going to go over it in this video, but this is um, doesn't require you to mess around with the lowest common denominator or any of that stuff. Okay, what gets uh, students in trouble with fractions is adding and subtracting. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, this is where we got to mess around and find the lowest common denominator and all that stuff that most people don't like doing, okay? So 
what's the the deal? Well, I'll get back to this problem here in a second. So let's let's say we have two fifths plus one fifths. Okay. So if we take a look at this problem, hopefully most of you out there will say, oh, okay, we can add these fractions because the denominators are the same. So all we're going to do is keep that same denominator, 5, and then add the numerators, okay, that's just 2 and 1, and we're adding, so we're just going to add up 2 plus 1 here, and we get 3 fifths, okay, and you would be correct, right? But if we have a problem like this, 1 third plus 2 fifths, we have 3 and 5 as denominators, so two different denominators. So here, this is where we got to have to... Um, figure out what's the lowest common denominator and all that kind of good stuff, right? So I'm just going to show you real quick. Hopefully, actually, let me ask you, what is the lowest common denominator? Kind of just pause here, let you think about it. Hopefully, you're, you know, you're up to speed on fractions. By the way, if you're even lost with fractions, don't panic, okay? That's the first thing you want to do. Just, hey, you need to get into a good uh, course and start reviewing mathematics so you can build your math skills up. This is just review for you. One time in your life you knew this stuff really well, but you're probably brushing off some cobwebs here. But anyways, the lowest common denominator is 15. So we would have to change the fraction one-third such that it has the denominator 15. So we do that by multiplying it by 5. So we're going to have to multiply both the top and bottom of this fraction, numerator and denominator, by 5. So this becomes 5 fifteenths and then here we'd have to multiply this one by 3 and then numerator by 3 so this becomes 6 15 so we can kind of go from there so I'm not going to finish out the problem well, let, let me just finish it out alright so this would be 11 15 okay so why did it go through all this well when you're dealing with an algebraic fraction problem okay or anything in algebra we have variables just remember these variables represent numbers that's an extremely important concept so when you're lost, okay, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, sometimes it's very, very useful to just put some numbers in, like a problem like this, and think about how you kind of handle that, okay? So you're like, all right, how do I, how would I do it if it was just numbers and not variables? And oftentimes can really help you out dealing with an algebra problem. Okay, so let me show you this little trick here. So, we went through all this process to find the LCD. We had to first determine what the uh, lowest common denominator was. It was 15. And so with this entire process, and then we had to change each fraction, etc. But let me show you another way of doing this. And this is going to be worth your while watching this video. So we have 1 third plus 2 fifths. Okay, so a direct way to add and subtract fractions. It's an excellent uh, tool because it really helps us out in algebra is to do what I call the bow tie method. It's going to be this times this, then this times this, and then this times this. So let's kind of watch and see. So you're going to go in di diagonals. It kind of looks like a bow tie, right? A bow tie looks kind of like that, right? Kind of think of it in that way. So you're always going to start from here, the bottom right corner, and you're going to go up. Let me just do it this way. So we have two fractions, one-third plus two-fifths. Okay, you're always going to start here in the bottom right and multiply that direction. Okay, that's the first step. Once you've done that, you're going to start to the bottom left and multiply in that diagonal. Then lastly, you're going to multiply the denominators. Okay, so there is a very specific step here. So don't, you know, don't go in order. Don't go out of the order that I'm doing here or, or um you'll get the problem wrong. Okay, so five times one is what? You're gonna multiply, okay? So we're here, we're gonna be multiplying here. Five times one is five, okay? The problem is addition, we're adding fractions, so we're gonna do plus, and then we're gonna go three times two is what? Six. Hopefully that looks familiar to you, okay? Look at that. That is our numerator, so we're gonna put a fraction bar. So let's just review what I just did. Five times one is five. 3 times 2 is 6, okay, it's an, an addition problem. If this was a subtraction problem, you would have a subtraction operator here there. So now the last step for the denominator is 3 times 5 is what? 15. Look at that. That's the exact same setup we have over here. So when we simplify this, this will be 11 fifteenths. Now let me ask you, what, what was easier? What I just did or all of this? And some of you might be going, man, why didn't my teacher teach me this 
this way. This is so much easier. Well, this is a powerful tool you need to have in your back pocket for sure. It's something I really uh, teach in my courses dealing with fractions. But there's some other drawbacks here because sometimes you don't get the uh, your 15 here, in fact, was our lowest common denominator. Sometimes you'll get a denominator that's not the lowest common denominator. So just make sure if you use this method, this bow tie method, that you fully simplify your answer. Okay, you fully reduce your answer. But knowing that, okay, the bow tie method works perfect with, I'm going to erase this, with algebra problems. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this here so we can kind of use the same colors. So we're going to do the exact same thing. If I'm going to add this, I'm gonna, I can go this times this. And then I can go this times this, and then this times this in the same order that I did down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Y times 1 is Y. So it's an addition problem. So it's going to be plus X times 2 is 2X. Or X2, okay, but in algebra we don't write things like that. X2 we write it as 2X. You always put the variable behind the number. We call that a coefficient, right? So this is going to be y times 1, remember you have to start from this bottom right hand corner, y times 1 is y, plus x times 2 is 2x, that is our numerator, so we're going to put our little fraction bar, and then x times y is xy, and that's it. Alright, so this, if you add this up, it, this would be the simplified expression right here. All right. Now there are other ways you can kind of uh, simplify this problem, but this is the easiest way. This is such a powerful method. So if you're facing a fraction problem, as long as you know how to add, or so, um, excuse me, um, multiply, then you know how to divide. Let's just look at that real quick. Let's see here, two thirds times one fifth. How do we multiply fractions? It's so easy. Just multiply the numerators and the denominators respectively. Two times one is two and 3 times 5 is 15 and you're done. Okay, always take a look at your answer and make sure you have it fully simplified, fully reduced. Now if this was a division, you have 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth. Well in division, we're going to take the fraction to the right and flip it. We call that the reciprocal. So we're going to rewrite this this way, 2 thirds. Now when we flip this fraction to the right, the division operator becomes multiplication. All right, so now we instead of one fifth, we have five over one. And again, because you're a pro at multiplying fractions, we're just going to multiply across, right? Two times five is 10, and three times one is three, and you're done. And by the way, leave your fractions as simplified, reduced, improper fractions. Don't divide three to 10. And don't do any of that unless you're uh, uh, told to do that. Okay, don't turn into a mixed fraction or a decimal. Just leave your answer. Just make sure it's fully uh, simplified. But um, so really, this is kind of a crash course on fractions. I just taught you how to multiply, showed you how to division, and if you have trouble with LCD and adding and subtracting, if you remember the bow tie method, that'll get you out of many jams. You can handle. Uh, numeric problems and algebra problems with this. Okay, so hopefully uh, this you know short little tutorial was worth your time. Of course, in my full course, I'll go over this and much much more because there's a considerable amount of math on this uh, teacher certification exam. But let's go ahead and wrap it up though. So hopefully you're, you're intrigued by that. If you've never seen that with fractions, um, you know when you've been teaching math long enough, you kind of come across these powerful little shortcuts are, you know, there's not shortcuts for everything in math, but there are certain things that, that, you know, certain shortcuts that really come in handy. All right. So, um, again, if you're new to my channel, I've been on YouTube for at the time of this video for like 12 plus years. So I have tons of, uh, material. I'm posting all the time, uh, to lots of math material, lots of advice material, give my best, um, lessons learned as a teacher, etc. So hopefully you consider subscribing. Again, I'm going to leave a link uh, to my full prep course on uh, uh, the birth grade to New York State teacher certification exam in the description of this video. So if you want to check that out, uh, take a look at that. Hey, if you like the video, definitely uh, would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Are you new to teaching? Kind of maybe assume that you are if you're starting off with birth grade two, but you know, there's oftentimes, you know, uh, teachers will go from middle school to elementary 
high school to middle school. I started off in high school, then I went to middle school. So maybe you're already an experienced teacher and you're just getting another certification. But leave me your uh, feedback. Again, I'm also making this time during or this video during the uh, time of the uh, um, pandemic. So uh, of course, it's extremely disruptive on so many levels, and um, you know a lot of schools are teaching virtually. Uh, but you know, I like to believe that you know eventually teachers are going to be getting back uh, to the classroom. Okay, there's some states, some districts. It's every you know, there's it's all over the place. But eventually, uh, if you are a teacher, I can I just personally believe hopefully it's sooner rather than later you're going to get back to the classroom as long as it's safe, uh, etc. Uh, so you know, uh, it's not just going to be hey you're going to be online not seeing students, you know, because I'm pretty sure you didn't become a teacher just to teach remotely. You really, you know, the real rewards is when you're interacting with your students directly and helping them, etc. So with that being said, I hope uh, this video helped you out in some way. Um, I wish you all the best in your teaching career and have a great day.